I would like to thank the first speaker on the uh, proposition team. And at the same time, I would like to invite Joshua, the first speaker on the proposition side, to deliver his speech. with my case substantive uh, truly and wellly, let me first add some additional clarifications and characterizations which we think that side proposition has left out from today's debate. I would like to widen the scope of this debate by considering developing countries as being not just the poverty-stricken countries as proposition would have you believe. We think these countries include countries with economies on the upswing. They possess vast amount of resources, both human and natural, which go largely untapped. Countries like Brazil, India, China, Russia, all countries that are on the upswing, all they need is impetus to become global players. We think that's something that they haven't really taken into account. Talking about developed countries, we see that these developed countries are not all those beacons of hope that they think they are. In fact, these are countries recovering from recession. They're overpopulated and they're highly reliant on a knowledge-based economy, something that an immigrant would not be able to integrate into. Furthermore, they have social problems like xenophobia, high cost of living, and low levels of social mobility and opportunities because they already have an excess of educated youth. We think that in their case, the immigrants aren't going to get the opportunities they think they will. And on the idea of immigrants, we think that immigrants, in fact, are not the heroes of war who are just going in and are going to be able to flourish wherever they go. We think instead that in fact people who are expensive to support, and we'll show that to you later, on how the government has spent much social welfare, social spending, just to, in, to make sure that they are supported in their initial stages, just to ensure that they assimilate into the country. We think that they are expensive, we think that they are difficult to cope with. And on the entire idea of the moral duty that you brought up, we'd like to clarify that this moral duty is a principle which entails an unlimited responsibility. And since they said that it's the right thing to do, since they said that it's the thing that we have to do because it's right, then today they're going to have to prove to us why we should do this right thing, even if it is unjust, because it harms developed countries and it harms developing countries as well in the short term and in the long term. So they're going to have to prove how the morality still exists, even though it's harmful. So with all that out of the way, let me move on to my contentions with their side. I've got three points of contention. Firstly, with their policy. Secondly, on the idea of morality. And thirdly, on the idea of immigrants. So on their policy, they haven't really given us a very clear idea of what it is. So here's what they really said uh, clearly. They're having a completely open door policy. All they have is a tokenistic security check to keep out terrorists. All they have is this expensive, uh, integration program which they haven't really said how they're going to hold it, they haven't really said what the integration program will entail, they haven't really said who it's going to apply to and how, whether they're going to teach the language or not. We think that that wasn't clarified, they need to bring that up in their second speaker. Furthermore, they gave no thought to the long-term problems that will occur. They gave no thought to brain drain, no thought to overcrowding in developed countries, and instead, they even told us that that developmental aid is a bad thing. But we tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that in doing so, they were rebutting a phantom case. Because our side does not stand for developmental aid. Rather, we stand for investment into countries in develop into companies in developing countries. We stand for long-term investment. We, st we stand for investing in infrastructure, investing in business. So that's something that wasn't really relevant, wasn't really part of the debate. So secondly, on the idea of morality, this is my second rebuttal for today. Sorry. We don't think, uh, in a moment, sir, we don't think that it is morally right. We think that, in fact, it's morally unjust to citizens of developed countries when you completely open the borders. But you disagree, sir. Well, actually, that's the problem. People in developing countries work for a few dollars a day for these companies who invested in these countries. This is the problem. Sir, do you think that they are not going to be working for a few dollars a day when they move to the developed countries? We think they're going to be exploited. We think simply because of the fact that they are immigrants, Companies in the developed countries are going to be paying them less, are going to be treating them worse. And we think that's a problem which they're not going to escape from when they move. But moving on, we think that the entire idea of morality doesn't really apply to the people in the developed country. Because when you swamp these developed countries with immigrants, you really don't take into account the social problems which are going to be caused. And I'll talk more about them later. Secondly, we think it's morally unjust to immigrants too, because they're going to end up living in squalor, end up with poor living conditions, and back home they're going to be suffering from brain drain, they're going to be suffering from long-term economic problems, it's not morally fair to them. So next, on the idea of the unfair situation, we think that life is inherently unfair, and their policy is attempting to solve a problem which will always exist. It will always exist, and in fact, even when they attempt to solve it, they don't do it very effectively. 
Firstly, we think there's no legal or moral obligation of developed countries to solve all the world's problems just because some people were born into poverty. Sure. And even if it was so, we think that they are also being unfair, as I've already said, to citizens of the developed country. Because in trying to help the citizens and being fair to immigrants from developing countries, they cause problems to the citizens in these developed countries. They can't be fair to both parties. We think that their side isn't really standing for an idea of fairness. Instead, they're hurting themselves. Lastly, on my last rebuttal about the nature of immigrants, now we think that they move because they have the idealism that there will be new opportunities because of the American dream, because they perceive developed countries to be the best place to go and because of this they move blindly, not taking into account the problems that will exist, the problems that are inherent in those developed sure, countries. Sure. We think the lack of jobs and the lack of good opportunities is something that they will never take into account, it's something that they never realise before they move. And secondly, we think that they don't even have an uh, impetus to move back or to send remittances back to the developing country because their open border policies allows the entire country to move to the developed country. All their family, all their friends move to the developed country. No more incentive to send back remittances, no more incentive to go back and help. We think their entire policy fails in the long term, fails in the short term. So with that, let me move on to our case for today. Now our stance today is that developed countries have no moral responsibility and any such moral responsibility would firstly harm the citizens of developed countries and secondly harm immigrants from developing countries. And we're going to prove this to you in several ways. Firstly, on my point about sovereignty. Secondly, on my point about priority to citizens. While well, Gimei will be talking about entrenching poverty and pathway to health. So on the idea of sovereignty, the thesis of this point is that it's morally unjust because uh, the moral duty infringes on sovereignty of developed countries because it's an unfair burden and it depri deprives developing countries of their dignity. Now you see that we, sovereignty is an idea which is globally upheld. We see that countries have the sovereignty to dictate their own domestic policy, to prioritise their own domestic issues, to do things the way they want them to. But when we allow for an open borders immigration policy, what we do is we force countries to uh, take away what they're doing in their domestic policy and we're taking away resources and attention away from the pressing needs within that country and focusing on this outside influx of immigrants fo and holding hostage their domestic policy to this new policy which needs to be tailored to, this outside, uh, to these outside individuals. We think that's uh, morally unjust, we think that that is not, that we think that that hurts sovereignty and that's not a very good thing. Secondly, we think it's also very unfair because they arbitrarily put this duty onto developed countries just because they're being perceived as richer. We think that's also not fair because you take away their sovereignty just because you perceive them to be more wealthy. And lastly, we think it strips developing countries of their dignity as well because they presume that developing countries can never break out of the poverty cycle by themselves. They presume that they need to move to developed countries in order to improve their life. We think that's wrong. Secondly, on the idea of citizen priority. Now, we see that most developed countries are democratic, and because they're democratic, their government is elected by their people. Therefore, their first priority always needs to be to their people. But when you allow for an influx of immigrants, as I've already said, you take away the government's time and attention from the man on the street, you cause a high level of social problems to these people in developed countries. You see things like overcrowding, more competition for jobs, loss of opportunities for citizens, and increased government spending on welfare. This was seen when a study by the National Academy of Sciences saw that immigrants in the USA take up $20 billion more in public services than they pay in taxes. Ladies and gentlemen, that's $20 billion away from the citizen recovering from recession, away from the citizen who is losing his job, away from the citizen that needs his government to protect him, but the government cannot because he needs to focus on this influx of immigrants which they advocate. We think that's unfair, we think that's undemocratic, we think this is harmful in the long term, it is completely morally unjust, no such moral duty can exist.